Next, I just wanted to, you know, we're going to, I'm going to start just a real quick reminder about this material time derivative. You know, we, we, we kind of went over what this material, or defined the material time derivative operator. And we're going to use that today. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of stick it up here in the corner of the notes, just a reminder. So when I use this capital D, dt that operates on something, that, so this notation, you know, it's a function of dot. That just means, you know, replace put something there, right? It's a function of something that's equal to the partial time derivative of that something plus the velocity vector, actually. So the, this operation. So uh, another way to write it might be Technically, that shouldn't have an arrow. V something like that. So, uh, if that something is a vector, then this is a divergence operator. If it's a scalar, it's it's grad. All right. So today, this is the material time derivative. So today we're going to talk about conservation equations. So what I mean conservation equations, we're talking about conservation of mass, momentum, and energy, right? And these equations, as we're going to derive them today, will be general enough that they're not necessarily specific to solid mechanics or fluid mechanics. They're just perhaps in one form or another more useful in one, one way or another. Um, you know, here, eventually we want to move on to, to doing geomechanics, so the sort of Real context, for the most part, especially when it comes to conservation of momentum, is you know with solid media. So, but we'll start with mass conservation. And the first way we're going to write it, it's probably in a w form that you guys aren't used to. Um, we're going to write it in two ways. But but the first way is you know what you might call the material form. And this has to do with, you know, last time I mentioned that material is a, just another sort of analogous word for Lagrangian coordinates or Lagrangian frame. And so the idea here is, you know, we, if we have a volume or we have a body in the reference configuration and we deform it to the current configuration, right, and in that body we have a little differential element that has a mass dm, right, and say that, you know, that this could be x, right? And over here, that same little element deforms. We'll call this dmo, this dm, and this is little x, right? Okay. So basically, what's the mass of the, if this is a little, um, you know, dmo? We might we can also write that as the density O uh, dVO, right? That's how we can define that that little differential mass. Okay, and so if if we want to know what the total mass is of the entire body, then then we integrate, right? So we we take the integral over VO. Rho O D V O. Right? So that that's the mass in of this body, and if mass is conserved, it has to equal the mass over here, right? And so likewise, we'll just go ahead and write it that there it's you know rho D V. Okay. So and remember, you know, D V O is like you know, dx1, dx2, dx3, and then this integral would be three integrals, right? dv, 
is dx1, dx2, dx3. And so if we want to write this left-hand side integral, this guy, if we want to write it in all in terms of the reference coordinates or the material coordinates, and that's why you might call this the material form of conservation of mass, then we need to transform or do a change of variables to get the, such that the, the volume of integration is over DVO, okay? Does anybody remember from calculus how you do uh, a transform of variables in, say, for areas or volumes? Well, um, if, if you go look at your calculus textbook, you'll, you can see that, you know, basically DVO is the absolute value of a Jacobian determinant times dv, right? That's just a standard transformation from calculus, right? Well, in this case, and, and you know, again, this is why I wrote this out, x and little x and big x here, I mean, the, J J the Jacobian determinant, and we'll write it in additional notation, is dv xi xj, right? That's the Jacobian determinant. This wrong, sorry. This should be should be dv j dv o, right? Okay, absolute value j dv o. Well, what's another name for this thing? Uh, and I, I guess let me be more precise. Hang on. So j is the determinant. So we're talking about the absolute value of the Jacobian determinant. So to be more precise, I need to say that this is the absolute value of DET partial XI partial big X J DVO. Okay, well, what's this thing? It's a deformation gradient, right? So also you can say DET F DVO. Right. So, and and we'll call we'll call the the determinant of f j. Okay, we'll use the same notation as you would might see in a math textbook. Right. So the the determinant of f is j. Okay. So let's just plug that back in over here, and we get. Go, Okay, so now for this statement to be true, for any arbitrary DVO, right? So DVO could be could be completely arbitrary, it could be anything, and so for this statement to hold for anything, the integrands have to be equal, right? So another way to write this would be like that. Okay, and so, you know, and then the more common way that you'll see it written will be, you know, that the absolute value of J is equal to rho over rho. And it turns out, I mean, if J, the determinant of F is always at time T equals zero, there's been no deformation, right? The, the deform, the current configuration, the deform configuration lay right on top of one another. At time, time t equals zero, and so time t equals zero, the deformation gradient is the identity matrix, right? And the determinant of the identity matrix is one, right? So that, so j is initially one, right? So it's initially positive. It's not negative. It's initially positive. Rho o, I mean, well, density really is not really a concept of negative density, right? It's it's always positive, and so. We can actually, because of that, because J is initially positive and rho O is certainly initially positive, then you can just drop the absolute value sign. It turns out J is always positive. So, so you can just say J, which is equal to the determinant of F, is equal to rho O over rho. And so this is a statement of the uh, 
mass conservation. Otherwise, we might hear it called the continuity equation. And you know, sometimes we talk about incompressible materials. Yeah. Uh, 